I saw in the course catalog that um, that this course existed, and I was looking for a fifth credit to take, and I thought, oh, that'll be fun, not knowing that it included a trip to Mexico. So I went and I talked to Dr. Gitter, and he was like, well, you know, this class, it has a required trip to Mexico, and I go, oh, I'm in. <laughs> we learned about Mexican immigration to the United States with uh, specifically, like, immigration patterns, like which, which groups in Mexico migrate to which areas in the United States, um, as well as the effect of that migration on the families and the economy and the politics, just pretty much everything surrounding the issue. My project specifically was on um, children, the impact on children and families, and I really enjoyed learning about that because I love kids and I, I love teaching and everything, and it was, it was just really fascinating to find out about how this kind of thing affects children in, in you know, in Mexico and in the United States, whose whose families have migrated, and nothing could have prepared me for what a what a fantastic experience it was. But I was really surprised to learn about um, that the fact that not everyone in Mexico is just dying to get to the United States, because the provinces we went to, um, which is Puebla, which is just south of Mexico City, um, they had a lot of people who were just content to be where they were and they may not have been the richest people in the world but they had their family and they were like I'm staying right here but a lot of people had gone it was just it was a very personal choice that they made and I was surprised about that because I had you know I've been exposed to the American stereotype of every Mexican wants to get to the United States the province we visited was very far away from the border it was kind of in central south Mexico but um, I think, especially in, in the project that I did, I did see a lot of the children's conceptions were of the border area and how the United States and Mexico interacted at that specific point, not how you know, people in Puebla and people in like Michigan acted. So I think it was, it was very focused around that kind of meeting of the two countries. Oh, my host family had a mom and a dad and five daughters and one son. One daughter and the son were in the big city trying to make money for their family to build another house. They were very accommodating to us, the whole family. I think, like with any experience going abroad, um, it's definitely an, like a mind-broadening kind of thing. Um, like when I look back on it 10 years from now, I'll just, all I can picture is just feeling really grateful for the opportunity to have gone and, and met these amazing people and seen this amazing country. My project was about children's drawings, um, Mexican children's drawings, and their perceptions of the United States and Mexico through those drawings. So um, what my partner, Danielle Distelhorse, and I did was we went around to uh, the schools in, in the province that we visited and we asked them to draw a picture of the United States and a picture of Mexico. And then we collected from every grade, from kindergarten through the equivalent of their end of high school. And we gathered them all together and we compared them and wrote a paper and found some really interesting things. First of all, there was um, this huge difference in the age groups, how they interpreted the United States and Mexico. The little kids, mainly like primary school, like fourth through sixth grade, they did a lot of comparative stuff. Like they would have the United States pictured as, you know, a couple buildings and a car, and then Mexico pictured as a waterfall and flowers and a happy sunshine. That happened a lot. <laughs> and um, so that all changed though when they got to secondary school which they showed that they were much more aware of the issue of immigration. So they would draw, you know, the interactions between the two nations along the border rather than just comparative. So they focused on the fact that there was an interaction between these two countries. So that was really amazing. And a lot, also a lot of the older kids did, they did things to make America seem very dangerous. Like they would draw guns and people getting robbed and also they showed a lot of discrimination against Mexican immigrants. I would say absolutely take advantage of 
the Sagan trips. They're just an opportunity of a lifetime. Like, there is no way I, I would have gotten this opportunity through any other venue. My favorite moment of the trip was the first morning um, of the homestay. And I woke up at like something awful, like 6.30 in the morning. And I walked outside and we were on this, this big like mountain ridge. And the view was just incredible. And it was, you know, that kind of pre-dawn thing. And I walked out and I stood and I looked over the edge and it was just absolutely breathtaking. It was wonderful. And I, I could not believe I was, I was there in that place with those wonderful people.